All right, just want everybody to stop, take a deep breath. It's gonna be fine. We are watching these very closely, and right now there has been nothing that has pointed to either of these storms becoming major hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico. Yes, it would be very unusual to have two named storms in the Gulf at the same time. And yes, those graphics can look scary, but right now nothing has been pointing to that potential at the moment. And that really has been a trend of the computer models. Yes, we talk about the models going back and forth, but that has never been depicted by the models. As the Gulf of Mexico looks like it's going to stay as a not exactly a hospitable environment for really rapid intensification. 14 right now has really been struggling. You do see that little closed low though, so it has gotten a little bit better defined, at least in terms of that surface circulation. Thunderstorms are trying to get going around the center, but a lot of the thunderstorms we've actually seen getting lifted and ripped away from the center due to this big upper level trough. So with that in uh, the, in mind, we're not expecting to see a rapidly intensifying storm as it approaches uh, the Yucatan. Now, if it goes over the Yucatan, we would likely see some weakening of the storm. Once it gets into the Gulf, Southern Gulf by Sunday, most models have been trending a little bit more westward, and it does take notice briefly becoming a hurricane and then weakening again before landfall, not because of the interaction with land, but it looks like we're going to have some fairly strong wind shear along the Texas and Louisiana coast, which would help to weaken this before moving inland. Whereas that had been 14 more of our focus, now our focus is on Laura at the moment, which, as I mentioned earlier, is within radar range, and you don't see that real close circulation. Rainfall is not wrapping around the center. You actually have little pockets of thunderstorms all over the place, so this also has not gotten any better organized. The forecast, remember, if it moves over the islands, first off, Hispaniola is very, very mountainous terrain. It could really disrupt that circulation. If it does stay over water, it has a better opportunity of further development. Making that turn into the Gulf of Mexico northward toward New Orleans, but that is not necessarily going to be the forecast tonight at 10, tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. Again, we do have days to watch this evolve, and I would venture to say and put money on it, we're going to see this forecast change again. Here's what's going on. At one time, it looked like the Bermuda High was going to have more of its western periphery between Florida and the Bahamas, which is why some of the earlier models had Laura actually staying out in the Atlantic. Well, then it looked like maybe it was going to build a little bit more into the Eastern Gulf, and so Laura responded accordingly and was more in the Eastern Gulf. Well, this high may be building a little bit more across the Gulf, which is why we've seen all of our storms getting pushed more to the West, and that has been a trend, and perhaps it's a trend that will continue. This is the GFS model. Here are our two storms. As we put this into motion, notice 14 comes off the Yucatan, moves more toward the Texas-Mexico line, and this is Laura. What does Laura do? Perhaps continue kind of following the weakness made by 14 and toward Texas. That, though, may have looked a little bit more in terms of hysterics this morning is looking like that may be a very possible case. Here's the Euro model. Now the Euro is more in line with what the Hurricane Center is thinking. The 14 moves toward the Texas coast, maybe a little bit more south of where the uh, the, the consensus, the or the uh, forecast is, and then for Laura to move inland across southeast or south central Louisiana. I don't think we're going to avoid the rainfall from one or both storms. Uh, we would like to do is avoid the wind, and if we can keep those storms away from us, then we would not experience a tropical storm or hurricane force winds. And to say that we would experience that as of right now, we just can't do it because if that storm does stay down to our South Laura, then we're not going to feel those strong winds. Here is the current environment across the Gulf of Mexico. Very, very hostile, big upper level low, deep trough and very dry air. As I mentioned, we'll likely see the trough lift northward, but that dry air is still going to be in play. And as that gets wrapped into either of the centers of those storms, it does help to disrupt the circulation and kind of spread out all of the rainfall. So as long as that dry air stays in place, then we're in good shape from seeing any kind of rapidly intensifying storms. Right now, our rainfall totals are anywhere from two to five around the city, a bit more down toward the coast, and not quite as much as you get to the North Shore and further west into the Florida parishes. So what we're expecting as of now, three to seven inches through about Wednesday. So again, that's not just all in one day. That's over several days. We should be okay with that. Breezy to gusty winds at the moment. I don't think necessarily tropical storm force that also could change some coastal flooding and we will definitely see changes in the forecast. We're driving